Let's see how much it is to respec. 329,000 platinum to respec. So I think I've spent like 3 million plat respecking or something, almost. Uh, so we tested Divine Crusader. Draconic Incarnation is a caster only. Magus is caster only. Grandmaster Flowers we tested. Shirati Champion I would love to test, but that's only ranged and caster. It doesn't have anything in it for melee, which is unfortunate. I kind of think it should. I kind of think it should, but it doesn't. Um, we tested Legendary Dreadnought. Primal Avatar does not have anything in it. It's a caster only. Exalted Angel is caster. We tested Fate Singer. My build is Shadow Dancer. That's where we started. So Shadow Dancer was definitely the build that I'm using for the character for this build. It definitely was the easiest and the strongest. That's not a coincidence. That's because I put a lot of thought into what I was going to land in at the end. But I would say that any of the melee trees are good. Fate Singer probably is the highest burst that we saw. Like, just a lot of really big numbers. But I think that's from Rain. Um, Divine Crusader was super strong because, like, the base damage was boosted a little. There weren't as many crits, but the epic strike with the... With the um, the stun effect that it does, the daze or whatever, whatever they call it. Cow it does like a cower effect. Th that was really strong. So this this tree felt really good. And then obviously, legendary dreadnought is super strong. I'm not a huge fan of dire charge just because I don't like the way it fails a lot. Like if you're angled the wrong way, it just doesn't even work at all. So. The fact that the hitbox can be fucked up on it, from my opinion, it's not like Star Wars The Old Republic where you don't have to actually even be facing the person that you're going to do your leap to. You just have to target them and press leap and it will automatically take you to them. This here, and it, I tried to do a dire charge from far away and it completely failed. Like I only just leaped forward a little bit and then... So that's my complaint with this. Otherwise, it's really strong because you'll... You'll hit a bunch and then it stuns them. So that was cool. And then if you're using a lot of action boosts, then you get a lot of love in this tree. And then I've said it before, I think uh, Action Hero is probably arguably the best epic moment in the game. Or one of the best epic moments in the game. It's just, it's so good. Um, this Maximum Overdrive seemed to be pretty good too, though, from this tree here. It's just, this is a very niche tree, like, you know. And then Grandmaster Flowers. Everything is nothing, and this epic strike is just really solid. Really, really good Drifting Lotus with the stun. But the problem with Grandmaster Flowers is I wouldn't recommend it to anybody unless you were actually a key generator. You can use this ability here to make your own key, but it's just such a pain to do that. So I probably wouldn't recommend it unless you were like a monk splash hybrid. But otherwise, I do love Grandmaster Flowers. I think it's great. But so we're going back to my, orig my original build, which is Shadow Dancer, and it's super strong. And it makes the my Damage Lord build really strong. We're in light armor. We have evasion. We get double strike. Immunity to negative energy drain. And we're all in. Um, because, okay, so here is something else. This is an artifact. So in heroics, might as well just go over sort of what I'm thinking about here so you can understand. So my heroic build was Dragon Lord. And Vistani, which I went up to Miss Stalker 4 in Celerity. And then I have 13 points over here in Fade Arc Illusionist, where we were doing Color Spray, You've Got My Back, Dragon Roar, and then I also have Sap. So my three CCs in Heroics were Sap, Color Spray, Dragon Roar, and they worked all the way from level 1 to level 20. No problem. 
once I hit epics, though, I stopped using sap. Not that it doesn't work. It still does. But I there was just I ran out of space on my active bar and then color spray my DCs just fell out. So I would need to actually actively boost them. So I'm not really color spraying, but I still have it. So the reason I'm bringing this up is at level 23, I was able to grab these two in Shadow Dancer. So I left Vistani and went into Stalwart Defender to grab Knockdown Immunity. Prior to level 23, I was using Grandmaster Flowers for Knockdown Immunity, but I decided to leave and I went in to do the build that I'm doing now, which is basically I'm using Quick Cut as an Epic Strike. Um, in low, like mid to low epics, I was using this Mantle of the Fury, but I'm switching now that I'm in Legendary and we're using Shadow Dancer. So this is sort of like the thought process. We don't care about Assassinate, although you could, but we don't care about it. But this here, because... It's an artifact of the build from Heroics. I still could take this Illusion DC. But if I were going to live in this build at level 32 and not TR ever, I probably would lesser TR out and drop Fade Arc altogether and drop Sap altogether. Just because now that I'm like in Legendary as a Dragon Lord, I have access to so much other stuff. So I would just probably try to boost my tactics and my damage a little bit more. But if I were TRing like this character a bunch of times in a row, I wouldn't worry about it. And I would just keep it the build that I played because it was really strong in Heroic having all those different CCs. So where I am now is sort of like I have stuff that I'm not really using anymore. And, you know, technically I could get rid of that stuff, but I'm still using the sword. And what I would add would just be a little bit of defensives or maybe some to hit from over here on Drow. I could get bonuses with short swords. I could get some imbued dice maybe, but... It really would not, it would make it a little bit stronger, but it wouldn't really be like a gigantic game changer. So, I also made the decision to jump out of heavy armor and go into light armor for evasion, even though it's sort of like a hot take that not a lot of people like evasion these days. I think it still is situationally pretty, pretty decent. Okay, and then for here, we're, this Shadow Mastery, it's one of the best epic moments in the game. It's amazing. Um, it makes you invisible and corporeal, but the best part of it is when anything swings at you and misses, it's PK'd with no saving throw. It's just really, really good. And then we take this because we're using a finesse weapon. We take this because we won't set up traps anymore. And then because of the artifact of Color Spray, like I said, because I'm not quite sure where I'm going to land with this build, I still will put the points here. But if I were to redo the build a little bit, I might drop color spray. And then that means this and this would go away. And then you could just take these points and put them into something else. Or likely what would be a better thing to do is to move a couple points over here. That's what I'm doing next. I'm going up and I'm going to get this double damage on the scream because I'm still using the scream to do AOE damage. So I'm going to pop that. I don't have enough points to get this, but if you're on your like main and you have like 75 destiny points, that's what I would do. I would, I would, I would boost my primal scream in order to get the heal and I would boost the primal scream to get the double damage or triple damage, whatever it is. But so that's where this, that's, this is where my build is right now. So we've got 37 points over here. I'm actually going to get core tier four when I level up. We'll probably try to get core tier four over here as well. Uh, but before that happens, I had, looks like I have an extra couple of points. So likely 
the best use for me for these would either be to just get a little bit more defensive with a curse guard or to get more damage with double strike which is that's what i'll do i'll just do double strike likely i'm going to have to respec again because i'm going to wind up with like 65 points and i want to be core tier four in both of these unfortunately because this is the first life tune and i haven't like bought a fate tome and i haven't bought i don't have any tomes on this uh, one except for the ones I got with the expansions that I bought like I won't have enough points to get this heal which is huge like this I've been using that heal a lot so that it's really it's hard to sort of let that go but the thing about it is the build is super strong anyway quick cut hits crazy the primal scream hits really good we get dimension door which is super useful for questing and you know like i have not yet had to um, i have not yet had to use a, a hireling so let's get our color spray back so everything else looks good, okay. And then, so just to show you guys where my build is sort of landed and keep in mind, like my gear is not min-maxed and optimized, um, but I am in a five-piece five salt marsh and a three-piece part of the family. So I've got three-piece part of the family. I've got the legendary wild card light armor. My my cloak is the sailcloth cloak. That's one of the five pieces from the Feywild, uh, from, not it's Feywild, Saltmarsh. My belt is a crafted belt that gives me insightful con, con and insightful spell resists because I'm stacking spell resists. The bracers are the driftwood bracers from the Saltmarsh. The gloves are the hammer fists, which are part of the part of the family set. My boots are, I have a two-piece snow set going right now that gives me some PRR, and they are the deep snow boots. My neck is the family recruit sigil, which is the last part of the, the part of the family, which gives me true seeing and relentless fury and a bunch of other good stuff. The, one of the rings I'm wearing is crafted, sheltering, spell resist. That's Mary's ring that I wear all the time. And then... My ring is a salt pearl ring that gives me charisma. My charisma is really low, and it's because I have not found an artifact to wear that has charisma. So basically, I'm just using like a, a topaz for it. The only artifact I've been able to find so far has been the legendary, the sa sapphire spyglass, which I basically slotted. It's not really what I want to use, but it's what I'm using right now. Um, you know, it just was the only thing that I was able to find. And then the goggles are not even ideal for my build. It's just I used them to make the fifth piece of the set, basically. So I'm like really far from being min-max optimized. Some of the gear that I have is just idiotic. My my stats look terrible. Keep in mind, no tomes. So if I were on my main, this would be, I would be a lot closer to like 90 charisma than 60. I have no tomes, no optimized gear. I'm not using I'm still using the Conjured Shadow Blade, so I'm missing my sentient. I'm missing all of those filigrees. I'm missing all of that extra power from those. So it's not like a super perfect test of like a build, but it's, it works.